everyone. Welcome to Yachting International Radio. You're with Kareen Rayson from The Crew Coach on The Wellbeing Project. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our vlog. I have the privilege to be interviewing Dean from the Yacht Arias. Hi, Dean. Hi, Kareen. How are you? Great to be with you. <laughs> you too. So, Dean won the recent A Crew Awards for Leadership. A huge congratulations. And I believe the, the Leadership uh, Award is focused on a crew member or a head of department that shows mentorship, positive leadership, excellent communication skills, and inspires their team. Is that correct, Dean? Yeah. Yes, it is. And, you know, I think, I guess, one of the hardest things to, I guess, to allow myself to absorb that title is the fact that it is a an award for leadership and for me I don't see it like that it's just me doing my everyday job you know it, it's okay I'm a captain of a super yacht yes that's my job title but I I'm here to to teach and make people better and help them be the best they can be that's that's how I see myself and um super appreciative of the accolades that have come my way and yeah it's it's a it's a great it's a it's been a great year to be honest so pleased for you uh so on the topic of leadership what does leadership mean to you personally you've named a couple of things but if you had to say it in one sentence sentence what would that be never stop learning as a leader, you you have to have an open mind. And the minute you believe, I am the first person to put my hand up and say, no, I'm wrong, mm -hmm. and, and accept the fact that I have said something wrong or I've done something wrong. You need to be willing to say, no, I've done that wrong. Learn from your mistake and then share it again with the next lot of people. You know, if 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 the laundry boy comes up and, and we're in a scenario and the laundry boy comes up with an idea and it's better than yours, then he's the leader. And everyone should rally around him and go with his vision and his idea. Excellent. And to be a great leader is to be view the overall picture and not be narrow-minded. Yeah. Okay. I think I never think stop learning. What you're highlighting there is, in terms of attributes, be open-minded. Uh, willingness to learn and grow and be vulnerable. So accepting your personal uh, mistakes, failures, whatever you may call them. Uh, yep. as well as what would you add to that in terms of um, important attributes that one should have as a leader? Self-awareness? Absolutely. Empathy. Oh, my God. Like, be empathetic to everyone around you because you don't know what their problem is. The problem that's in front of you I would say 95% of the time is not the root problem. And then if you can communicate with the person that is having the issue or whatever the scenario may be at the time, then realize that what's right there in front of you is not the actual root cause. It's yeah. always something else. Yeah. And you need to be empathetic to the people that are trying to tell you and realize and be willing to listen to what they've got to say so that you can understand the scenario and then give advice and mentorship to help them through whatever's happening. To so never take an issue at face value, take the time oh. to really understand the underlying problem so that it incorporates the skill of active listening and empathy building and, and compassion, I guess, at the end of the day as well. That's very, very Yeah, important. Yeah, absolutely. I love what you said with regards to leadership is not doesn't have to reside in just a head of department. It can be the junior student, stewardess. It could be the deckhand, the bosun. It can be all sorts of roles. We all are are capable of being leaders. So, what would you say would define core leadership? What would you be seeing, behavior-wise? I think if if as a leader you fall into the trap of I know best scenario or 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 I am the captain that is that is the or I am the head of department I am the chief mate or I am the chief stew mentality where you become 
heavy-handed and become a a dominated leader rather than a leader that like helps nurture you through through the issues in my opinion i guess uh, simplistically if you don't listen mm. if you refuse to listen to people and what's in front of you then you don't really know what the problem is so you're making a decision without knowing all the facts so it goes back i guess a little bit to that first part that i said Yes, so it all sounds like it's the entitlement attitude that can interfere with good leadership. Yeah, for sure, yeah. So I did a recent Instagram story with regards to bullying, or so if crew had actually personally experienced bullying, bullying on board or had witnessed it, and 90% of people of the crew members said that they have. What is your policy around bullying and how do you manage it? Yeah, bullying bullying on board is something that is very present. And as a captain, you need to have a great relationship with your crew. And this could be a little bit long-winded, but let me just stay with me for a second. If you don't have the relationship with the crew as a captain, when you walk into the crew mess, the conversation either stops or changes. If you maintain a relationship and stay at a constant level with your crew, when you walk into the room, the conversation will stay the same. And then that way you get a feeling of what's happening on board and then also you get the feeling of when someone is being overpowering or dominating or bullying, you know, because there's such... Bull Bullying is is the end result, which is up here. Mm. And there are so many stages of getting to bullying. It could be verbal. It could be presence. Mm. It could be physical. You know, that bullying is a big word with a lot of meaning to it. Mm. And there's so many different layers of that. And what I try to do is stay engaged with the crew engage with what's happening on board and feel the vibe and try and shut it down before it gets to that level. Okay, look, on boats, there's always going to be banter between departments, between males and females, but it's to the level of which me as the captain, the person that's the most responsible on board, allows that banter to go. Mm. That's what determines the frequency of what's acceptable and what's not acceptable, in my opinion. I'm not always right, but that's how I, I do it. Yeah, great. So if you can give me an example of how you would do that, being in a leadership position, if you see or notice bullying happening, happening on board or hear of it, how do you actually, what is, what is your go-to in terms of managing that? Uh, I think... It needs to be, in the first instance, a one-on-one -on -one situation. So take a mental note of the situation, let it pass by, see how it expires, and then take the person that was involved on the receiving end, have a chat to them, see if to make sure that you're on the same page. Because if the other person doesn't see it as bullying, you know, then, then maybe I'm misreading the situation. If it turns out that that's how it's perceived, then go back to the source and say, listen, the comments that you were making in the crew mess were inappropriate. We need to tone it down. Or you need to understand that your, your comments or your actions have reactions to the people that you're processing it at. Mm, you know? And so at that level, it needs to be private because you don't want to embarrass people but you also need to make sure that they understand that they're being watched or it's being noticed. Yes, yes, 100%. So on the topic of inappropriate behaviour, we have assault. And having done a seminar on assault in Monaco, it was shocking to hear the results of how many people on board have been assaulted. Now, assault can include unwanted touching, groping, kissing, where it makes a person feel uh, uncomfortable or even threatened. 
So with regards to sexual harassment, because I know there's, a, as you mentioned before, there's a lot of banter on board and I've heard of like a crew member, she was doing unpacking the drinks into the fridge and she was bent over and someone went over and slapped her bum. And that might be seen as something that's quite jovial, joking, but it made her feel uncomfortable, which therefore it's classified as assault. What are your thoughts around that? Well, yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna lead with you, I'll lean towards you on that because that's the beginning. That's the beginning of the end. Yes. So, if I saw that, that would be an immediate, an immediate conversation there and then in front of both of the people, the person that did it and the person, because that is the beginning of a very slippery slope. Absolutely. And. So, yeah, that's how I would deal with that for sure. It would be just an, an instant pick up and, and regardless of who's in the room. Yes. And I think it's important to note that if these behaviours are allowed, it is what forms our culture on board. And that can breed toxicity and it can impact crew productivity, engagement and morale. So you really got to take notice of your behaviors and be responsible for your behaviors and realizing that it may not only be impacting one person, but it's impacting everyone on board, including the culture. No, no, I, I agree com completely, definitely. You know, I, I think what I have noticed in the, in the few years that I've been doing this is that the physical part, although it's there, in my opinion, isn't the the worst one. The worst one, no, not worst, prevalent. The most prevalent one is the emotional side of it <clears throat> because the way people are with other people emotionally, we don't see it mm. and it's harder to pick up on mm. and we don't know how we all absorb comments and remarks differently and for me as a captain that's a much harder one and so then I'm always looking at how either the guys are during the how they feel and how they say good morning or and the same with the girls and stuff my day starts from the very second they say good morning to me because if they're all happy you've got a smile you say good morning you know <clears throat> and um you can feel it. It's the emo the it's the, the the emotional side of it that I think is a greater challenge to manage. Absolutely. It really is. Absolutely. So for those who want to become leaders in terms of further developing their skill set, we talk about leaders that are born and made. So you can be born with particular skills such as empathy, but other people may need to to learn that and you can learn that through life experience but say if you're someone in your early 20s and you haven't had that life experience behind you how can you accelerate your personal and professional development what have you done personally i i think that's a great question well i i think to you need to be able to listen and be willing to listen, then if you make a decision, stand by your decision, whether it's right or wrong at the end of the day. But if it's wrong, admit it. Don't, as a leader, if, and I do it all the time, if I make a mistake or I do something wrong, we ding the boat, we make a mistake, and if it was my fault, I'll be the first person to get all the deck crew together and say, sorry, guys, I got the boat in the wrong position. I didn't expect something that was my fault. Don't worry about it. We're all good. Everyone's safe. It's the same in a leadership role with my FOs, my first officer, my uh, chief stewardess. Be strong enough to accept that I've given you the responsibility. Make the decision and stand by it. But also, if you're wrong, be big enough to accept that you're wrong. And don't, because I think sometimes people make a mistake and then keep saying, no, no, it was right, it was right, and mm -hmm. keep going down the right line of, no, I made the right decision, and it just makes it worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
but you've got it you've got to get out there you've got to be off the fence as such don't as a leader you need to know that's my decision that's what we're doing then if we're wrong review it later and yeah. and, and learn and that's it yes so on that topic of learning what has been your biggest learning as a leader so far to have the to have someone to listen to you for starters you need to be able to have someone that you can go to and talk be open and not be afraid that you're going to be wrong i, I keep going back to that thing so i for me, it's just a, a massive acceptance of, you know, okay, yes, I'm the captain. I've got to make decisions. I have 16 kids on this boat that I look after. They're my responsibility, and I just have to do the best that's what's for them. And sometimes I do it, 98% of the time I do it, but a couple of times I'll get it wrong. And so, yeah. Okay. That's great I guess I don't stop learning. Kareen, no. that's the thing, no. you know, every day is a school day. Yes, and that's the way so, we face life. Uh, I think yeah. we'll, we'll become more exposed to many other opportunities if we have that mindset. Yeah, you know, I quite often say to my chief officers and my chief stewardesses, it's not that I'm a better leader, it's just that I have more life experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm older than everyone else on board the boat. So, it's not that I'm a greater person or a better decision maker. It's just I have more life experience. So with life comes experience and then makes you a better leader. Yes, yes. So then what do you think you still have to learn as a leader? What's left? As I know there's... You know, so much. <laughs> so much. I, 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 get, I learn something every single day. Look, I love my job. I love getting up in the morning. I love interacting with the crew, with the owners, with the charter guests, and it makes this job so easy. We are so lucky to have this amazing industry, and I love it. Mm. And as a leader, I don't. I learn something every single day. So what have I still got to learn? I've got everything to learn, you know, and 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 it's as simple as that. And we are so truly blessed to be in an amazing industry. And one of the things I said at the ACRA Awards in my, in my acceptance speech was we're all on this planet for a very short period of time. If you're on a boat that you love, work is easy and life is great. So don't be on a boat that you don't like. Get off it. Don't right. complain. Yes. Don't complain. Don't, don't jump up and down and say this boat's terrible. Pack your bags and leave get on a boat that you love and go out and be amazing yes I, everyone can be amazing yes absolutely a hundred percent life is too short for that and there's some nasty people out there and don't withstand it stick by your values and go out there as you said and reach your full potential that's it yeah every single person has the ability to be amazing yeah. I truly believe that. And you just need the right circumstances to unlock that. Mm -hmm. So don't waste your time being unhappy. That's no. it. No. Mm -hmm. Dean, I think I'm going to end it off there. It's such a positive note. Thank you so much. No, I enjoyed being spending time with you and I love your posts and I love everything that you're doing. So it's great. It's great for yachting and it's great for the industry. So thank, thank you. you. So much, Dean. Thank you. The fact that you're still here listening to this interview tells me that you probably got a lot of learnings and takeaways from tuning in. If you are interested in expanding your leadership skills and leaving your legacy within the industry, then join my waitlist. The doors of my leadership course will be opening soon or head over to Instagram where you can send me a DM as well as access a range of leadership resources for this month. Okay, everyone, hopefully I will see you at the same time, same place. <laughs>